Next, we have propensity. Now, propensity, the probability determined by propensity, is the likelihood of the event occurring given what we know about the causal relationships and the conditions. Um, you know, frequency is an excellent probability to determine, say, you know, weather trends over the course of a year and tracing those trends you know, from year to year to year to give us a probability of what's going to happen, right? This is the basics regarding the seasons. It's just, you know, frequently happens and it gets cold, <laughs> again, over the average, uh, uh, you know, every year in February in San Antonio, Texas. Okay, sure, right? That, that happens frequently. That happens many, many years in a row. And that's great for figuring out trends. But for a given day, Frequency isn't always that useful. I mean, we're not going to try to figure out whether it's going to rain on February 3rd of 2023 uh, simply because it's rained you know, a certain number of times on February 3rd of, of uh, 2022 and 2021 and 2020. Right? We're not looking so much at that particular day. To figure out the probability on a particular day, well, then we're going to look at the present conditions. <laughs> I mean, what's actually going on? So, you, you know, today, for instance, right, we got bright sunshine, the humidity's low, the pressure's a little on the higher side, uh, so rain is just not that likely, right? But that's because we're looking at the cause of, you know, the, the conditions and the cause of relationships with them, right? We could look at a particular tree or a plant and figure out well, what are the chances it's going to survive? Like, well, we'd have to look at the, the situation that tree or plant is in and look at the causal relationships between that, those conditions, and the plant itself. Um, if you're, I don't know, cooking. <laughs> now, again, frequency probability is really useful to help determine what the causal relationships are. Right? So we know through frequency that turning the, the burner on the stove up high is going to boil that water in, you know, 10 minutes or something. Okay, we've learned that through frequency probability. But then we use those causal relationships to figure out the probability of whether the food's going to turn out well, right? Whether it's well cooked or cooked thoroughly. Yeah. So that, that's frequency, excuse me, that's propensity. And we can use frequency to determine propensity, yes, but then when we start using propensity, well, it's a different sort of uh, it's a different sort of evidence, right? It's a different sort of probability. And by the way, not all frequency is going to you know frequency isn't always going to work to help us to determine propensity. I mean, there are unique situations, there are unique uh, uh, or you know just you know not studied right? <laughs> situations where uh, we haven't done the frequency on say I don't know. I just saw I just saw a really weird one. Uh, uh, I don't know if this is true. I don't know if it works. Uh, but, you know, people have suggested that, you know, if you take your rice, right, and you, you, know, you soak and rinse your rice before you cook it, well, you keep that water. And that water has certain nutrients, calcium, nitrogen, I think potassium is also in there, has certain nutrients. So you pour it on your houseplants, and that will help your houseplants grow. Right, okay, so when we're doing that, we're doing propensity, right? We're talking about propensity. We're not doing frequency. Nobody, to the best of my knowledge, people have not widely tested whether using uh, water where you've you know, rinsed your rice, or, or rice and then poured it on houseplants, how well that works. Um, so per, uh, frequency, it'd be great if we had frequency all the time, but we don't. Okay. Statistics is wonderful, but we haven't, you know, we haven't measured everything. <laughs> um, you know, even if we, you know, when we're talking about uh, um, what supports life, we're just simply not saying, aha, All right, we found life on exactly one planet out of nine in our own solar system. Therefore, one planet out of nine in every solar system has... No, that's not what we're doing. I mean, we're using frequency to an extent, but with, you know, that's not what we're doing. If we're looking at a particular planet to figure out whether there's life there, well, we're probably going to do propensity. So if it's way too, you know, way too close to the, the star that plants, okay, there's no life there. Right? It's burning up. We're not even going to bother looking. Okay. So we got, so far we talk about logical possibility. We talk about frequency. We talk about propensity. These are not equivalent to each other. They're not always useful in the same circumstances. Right? One's going to be better than the other. Right? When we're talking about logical possibility, either there's life or there isn't. Right? So, aha, look at that planet. It's got a 50-50 chance of having life. No, we're not doing that. 
<laughs> right, that do, that's not going to do it. Um, we're going to look towards propensity. So we've got these different kinds of evidence. They're not equivalent. They're not equally applicable. They're not going to give you the same answer, necessarily. One last one to look at. Plausibility.